So folks, we are live here at game two as we have the Upper Valley Longhorns versus the West Side Eagles. Enjoy.
Angela! You look at the quarterback with the ball! If you see him do that, Julio, you know the ball's going. He already did that smart. Hey, where's the pass? Go, go, get it! Hey, Sawyer! Sawyer, 
All right, folks, it is halftime. Hope you enjoyed the first half five works as the Upper Valley Longhorns jumped out to a 25-0 win um, lead over the Westside Eagles. Um, we will be back after halftime. Enjoy this episode of... Uh, we'll see what we're going to play here in a second. Thanks. Welcome everyone for joining us here on the Borderland Sports. We are joined by four local Borderland Sports Reports coaches here. We've got Chapin, Tornillo, Coronado, Eastlake. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's get right into this real quick. So uh, coming out of this COVID year, right now, full slate of games planned. What do you guys see as the outlook for your districts as we get ready into this, get the season started? I'll, I'll go first. I mean, our district is the smallest uh, out of these guys. So uh, we have one local team in Anthony that we play against, and then our other three opponents are, are uh, out of town. But uh, our district's really tough at the top. Crane and Alpine are really tough. So uh, we'll kind of measure ourselves uh, as we get, get into district against them and, and hopefully compete and, and play well against them. I think with our district, one of the, the I guess, benefits is uh, we have seven non-district games prior to the bye week, and then we get into district. So, uh, you know, you're going to know what your team is. You're going to know, you know, be able to work out the kinks and, and see what, um, you know, what you're bringing into that district play. So you're, you're really going to have a, a handle on uh, what you have by the time our district starts. So, I mean, that, that's one of the benefits of having so many non-district games. I think, uh, you know, it's, I think, I think everybody in the entire city, you know, is kind of, uh, they're not, they're kind of unsure of what kind of team they're going to have. Aside from some of them that have been able to keep them all together, uh, a lot of them have been, uh, had a lot of kids that are missing all, uh, you know, spring and summer. And uh, I know us at Coronado, we're hoping that we get a lot of those kids back first day of school and, you know, we'll have a week to get, get them all organized and, and we'll have three three uh, in our district we have three preseason games and then you're in the district uh, so you gotta you gotta get ready fast and and it's like I said every every uh, every game is is a tough game I think the biggest question for us is being able to fill in those gaps from those young kids that need to come in and play immediately graduation kind of hit us a little hard so we're kind of concerned with our lower levels only having a limited amount of opportunity last year uh, we got a short time frame to get those kids ready, and I think a lot of the other teams in our district are in the same boat. As we look at game play, how is that going to impact district play as far as you've got these returning quarterbacks and then you've got these, well, you've got these seasoned quarterbacks and then you've got these younger quarterbacks coming in that don't have the experience. How is that going to impact you guys' approach to some of these games? 
Well, I mean, I, I think like Coach had, had mentioned earlier, one of the, the things you got to get the young guys ready to play. You know, we're fortunate enough to have our quarterback returning and, and did a, a great job last year, and we have high expectations for him this year. Um, but we're filling some holes with um, 2B sophomores that only got two games in a scrimmage last year. So, you know, like Coach said, it's, it's really trying to get those pieces up and um, surrounding yourself or surrounding your quarterback with, with weapons and, you know, guys that he can have that confidence in in that amount of time. You know, I think it was really beneficial for us uh, to be able to have the seven-on-seven -seven, um, season throughout the summer and, and be able to compete and, and see what um, the young guys can do at that, that varsity pace. So, um, you know, I do think, like Coach said, um, seeing what those young guys, those sophomores that are filling the, the roles of those graduating players, how fast can you bring them up to speed and, and are they going to be prepared to, you know, take on a, a varsity season? Yeah, I think that's big. I know uh, we had a three-year starting quarterback and, and we'll, we'll have a sophomore this year, so uh, we'll lean on some of the you know, the more seasoned kids, our offensive line, our, our two receivers, uh, maybe trim the playbook down a little bit, give him some quicker reads and things like that. That, that should help him uh, be successful. And, and once he gets a little bit of confidence, hopefully that'll help us grow offensively for sure. The good programs, they adjust, you know, what they, you know, what in my, in my time as a coach, uh, you know, the good programs, they they'll lose a, a marquee player and then and then uh, they'll come back the next year and they'll still be successful. They just may not be doing the same stuff. I mean, I've seen uh, teams in the past, you know, that were you know prolific passing teams and then they turn into a run team. They're still they still give you the same sets and everything, but you know you you adjust to what you have and uh, you know some of the best coaches that I've seen, you know, come they. Year in and year out, they're making the playoffs and challenging for a district championship. Sometimes they have a great receivers and a great quarterback. Sometimes they've got a great running back, but no receivers or no quarterback. You know, uh, the good coaches, the good programs, they adjust to what they have. And, uh, and I, I expect that to happen this year. You know, the graduation doesn't affect uh, good programs. I, th I think for us, you know, losing the guy that we lost is obviously going to come to an end at some point, you know, unfortunately for us during the COVID year. Um, but we knew what the expectation was going to be when he was gone, you know, was to have somebody of quality ready to go upon his departure. Uh, I felt like we, I, I feel like we've done that. You know, he's not going to be a guy to, you know, make us win games. He's just going to manage the opportunity that he has and we'll rely a little bit on our run game and, and our offensive line. Obviously, we'll, we'll be a little bit better. I mean, we'll, we'll be better on defense, so uh, that's also going to help him grow into that role. But I'm completely confident. But once you have, when you have a three-year guy like you had, and then you're going to have coming back, and Escobar is not not a bad guy. He's a good quarterback. So there's you know that's there's a lot to be said about good quarterback play. And that kind of leads me into my next question. So with that COVID shortened year, you had a lot of younger players who didn't get the reps that are going to get those reps for the first time this year. As we get into season play and you see the young talent that's here and they get the, the 10 games or the number of the full complement of games that they would get for a full season, how do you think that that's going to impact the recruitment of student athletes here 
with the exposure and the more games that they're going to get playing this year. Um, we're always looking at how to, how does this all translate to helping student athletes that want to continue to play in college, being able to do so. So do you guys feel like this full body of work will help a lot more student athletes this year when it comes to recruitment? I just think that being in the situation that our city was in last year, it kind of hurt a lot of the accolades that people were were expecting to be on or, or you know, deserved more than anything. Um, having a full season, obviously there's, you know, with the unexpected, you know, as far as who can pop up, a young kid can pop up on the scene, have a great quarantine time. And quarantine was good to some kids, you know, that, that had the opportunity to work out and had a facility and things like that. But it's definitely going to help kids, you know, progress through, through this season for sure. I just... All right, folks, we get ready for the second half here with the Longhorns winning 25 to zero. Enjoy the second half.
Yeah, the U11, the older kids. Which guy was it?
So where are you ranked now? Uh, I'm the 21st player in ESPN, and I'm the third shooting guard in the country. Gotta stick these last two uh, two years out, and uh, hopefully continue to make history. I was like, hold up, this is something different. I don't know what happened, but he ain't trying to do everything on the floor now. That is the most important thing. It's just so with the trusting teammates. Also, is like uh, a great player cannot win games by himself. This year is like certain situations that I shouldn't have fouled because the fourth quarter we definitely need me on the court to try to make a yep. push to win that. The, the first quarter of that Sweet 16 game, we looked like probably the best, one of the top five.
how's, how was that transition going from middle school to high school and playing varsity basketball? Um, it was a lot. It was like really different than middle school because in middle school I kind of like had to do everything. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to high school, like there was like other people around who knew what they were doing and they were pretty good. So I kind of just got to like take a step back and just watch for a little bit and learn from the older people. Mm -hmm. So you went from being the big fish to yeah. just being in the pond, huh? Yeah.
get the ball! All right, everyone, that is the ball game final score, 31-0. to zero. The Upper Valley Longhorns. Hey, y'all got to get out of the tent. Y'all got to get out of the tent. Out of the tent. Out of the tent. <laughs> final score.